She had the biggest heart I'd ever known and would just take people under her wing. She made lifelong friends wherever she went. She was always a crack up to be around with just the best energy. Um, she gave the best advice on any subject and was always there to listen and say all the right things you needed to hear. I don't know how she just naturally had all the answers to everything, but she did. She was such a social butterfly and was constantly on the phone with her huge circle of people if she wasn't with them. Always had plans and events to look forward to. Loved jamming out to her rock and roll music with her man and her family and her friends. Um, we all collectively made sure that she never felt alone, made sure there was never a dull moment, and showered her with so much love. I think that's what kept her fighting for so long. She didn't ever want those special times with us to end and was gonna do whatever it took to stay strong, stay hopeful, and keep hanging on so she could keep loving and enjoying her people. And she did. She was the definition of a fighter and the definition of strength. She had so many funny Shannon ways about her, which we always joked and called her shenanigans or her shanner. And there was one night that she was in a deep sleep and she said, I want a strawberry daiquiri on ice, blended like a smoothie. <laughs> and we were like, okay, mom. And then like shortly after that, she started singing, pour some sugar on me. And we were like, okay. So she just was having fun in life and in her sleep. Um, she loved unconditionally. She lifted people up at any chance she got, despite what she was going through herself. She never let the punches that life was throwing her way bring her down or stop her from living to the fullest and being a walking ray of sunshine wherever she went, even when she didn't feel like sunshine some days. She just made people feel warm, welcome, seen, and heard. Cracking up with her was always the best medicine. Curly, her and I would have our bachelor and bachelorette watching nights <laughs> and just giggled for hours and she always had the best commentary and the best reactions. She always despised the kissing scenes and she'd be like, all right, like, let's fast forward. <laughs> she just hated that. And um, she loved binging her murder, murder mystery movies and TV. Anyone that would come on the ID channel, she'd be like, seen it, the husband did it. So she had seen every episode ever. That was her thing. She, made the, she documented our whole lives, wrote down and kept every little thing. She gave us the best upbringing and mother's love a girl could ever wish for. <laughs> Sorry. I feel so lucky to have had 28 beautiful years with her. Although it breaks my heart into a million pieces to not have her anymore. I know her soul and her love will never leave me. She will always be my best friend and my inspiration. We all gained an angel. I love her and everything that she was so much. And I love you all so much. I've gained so many second moms and aunts and a second dad. And just so much extended family. And um, Carly and I are so lucky to have had you all growing up and through this roller coaster of a journey. I'm so lucky and honored to have been her daughter and to be a part of this family and this tribe. Seeing and now fully understanding the legacy and memories and love she left behind is just out of this world. The amount of lives she touched, how much she meant to all of us, how she brought all of us together. She was a force, one we could never and will never forget. She loved all of us. Those memories and that love will never go away. I know her soul is out there floating around watching over all of this. Her energy was too powerful and she has too much love here. She will never fully leave our sides. In her own words, she wrote to us, have fun, smile, and don't be sad. Life goes on and you all know the last thing I would want is for any of you to remain sad. So celebrate the fabulous times we have with each other. And we'll all have to continue to do just that. Remember her energy, her light, the mark she left on us, and the love and friendship we all shared with her. The countless stories we all have with her will be told for years to come. To the best mom, stepmom, sister, lover, aunt, mentor, and friend a person could ever ask for. We miss you and love you so much, mom. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I was writing this message and trying to write to you all, all I kept coming back to is that I wanted to write to my mom. So this is um, a letter to her. Dear mom, life has been really hard down here without you, and it's hard to even believe you're gone. But like you said in your last days, I'm going to the beach, and I know you're having the time of your life there with your parents, sister Gail, and all the people and dogs that you've ever loved who are no longer here with us on Earth. I know someday I will see you again, but until then, I want to reflect on the amazing life you had and the amazing life you gave me and Lindsay. Everything that is good about me is because of you. Not only did you teach me to always be kind, stay positive, and work hard, but you also showed me how to be strong when things get tough. Thinking back, there are so many memories that came to mind that formed me into the person that I am. Some of the best memories I can remember were simple things like blasting Backstreet Boys or NSYNC in the car on our way to soccer practice, and the funny little hand bop that you would do while dancing along in the car. Oh yeah, she, she did would do this. You <laughs> <laughs> sit in the car seat and do that. Um, car rides also always came with a pop quiz. It felt like every song that came on the radio, she'd say, do you know who this is? We never did, but um, we have come to have a really great love for music of all different genres and especially the Rolling Stones. If anyone knew mom, you knew that she was a big Stones fan. And um, one of my most cherished memories is seeing them together in 2019. And I just know that the love of the Stones will live forever through all your favorite people. Lucky for Lindsay and I, you also jumped on the Harry Styles train with us last year. <laughs> and he joined us tonight. <laughs> And you always said that he was like a young Mick Jagger. We were so lucky to score tickets to his concert earlier this year and had the best time ever seeing and dancing. It was truly the most fun night of my life and I could see how happy you were to be there with Lindsay and I. On the theme of music, one of the most hilarious memories I have is driving in the car with, with you, just a normal day, and all of a sudden you turned on Bodies by Drowning Pool, turned it up full blast, rocked the fuck out, singing, let the bodies hit the floor, let the bodies hit the floor. And I was shocked. Wide variety of music. And that became one of the songs that we would play to and from her appointments in the last few months of her life. We always knew when mom was home because she'd have the music cranked all the way up, having a party of one, which you never were ashamed of. I didn't realize until my adult life how selfless you really were when we were growing up and all the sacrifices you must have made. This may seem in insignificant, but it always stuck with me. I'll never forget you rolling out of bed on a cold winter morning, throwing on your robe, which you always wore, and slippers, and driving me just three houses down to the bus stop with the heat blasting just so I didn't have to wait for the bus in the cold. She hated mornings. When we were young, we could always count on you to pick us up from school or be waiting at the bus stop when we got home. When you went back to work and I was finally old enough to babysit Lindsay, we would call you at work constantly to tattle on each other, but you always said, be nice to your sister, I'll be home soon. We didn't know it at the time, but you were raising us to be best friends, just like you and Aunt Carol. Sorry. You knew how awesome and important it was to have a sister, and up until your last days, your only wish was that we would stay together and keep our close bond, and we promise to keep our weekly bachelor nights tradition alive, but it'll never be the same without you. You always did your best to fiercely protect Lindsay and I from anything sad or bad in the world. You always chose to look on the bright side. As I grew into my teenage and adult years, you still protected me, but even when I would make mistakes, you never made me feel like a failure. You helped pick me up, learn my lesson, and helped me be a better person with no judgment. From you, I learned that there are going to be really hard things in life, but I just have to keep pushing, keep fighting, and do my best to be a good person and keep a positive attitude. You were the true definition of resilient. Gosh, I can't believe that you battled cancer twice and rolled over yourself with a suburban. That is a true story. I'm in awe that anyone is resilient enough to overcome those obstacles, but you did, and I know you did it for us. As we approach the holidays, I know it'll be one of the hardest things we'll ever have to do without you. As kids on Christmas morning, you would always yell up the stairs, wait, don't come down yet. 
you needed time to turn on the Christmas lights on the tree, start playing Christmas music, and arrange our presents just perfectly. When we could finally run down the stairs, it was such a special, magical feeling. I know that magic was all because of you, all the way up until our last Christmas together. As I look back at my life, I realize that you were and are the center of everything I've done and everything I am and will be. Right after your passing, I told my sister Megan how sad I am that I will have kids one day and not be able to call you and ask for what to do or how to be alone. And she reminded me that even though I'll be desperate to call and ask for advice, you're still going to be there with us. And you already showed me how to be a good mom by being the best example someone could have ever asked for. I'll never forget those words because they're so true. Your grandkids will always know who their grandma was and their childhood will be magical too because of the things you did for us growing up. Everywhere you went, people always gravitated towards you because you were such a warm person to be around, a safe, safe space for so many. I hope you know how truly loved and adored you will always be. The lives you touched are infinite and we will miss you forever. I want to end with thanking you for leaving some final words behind. You have no idea how incredibly special it was to find those notes on your phone after your passing. They will stay with me for the rest of my life. You said, my hope is that you will have a peaceful, happy life. And remember that life will get tough, very tough sometimes. But keep faith and keep marching on. Things all come to pass. You also left this note for all of her loved ones. You all know I would not want for you to be sad at my passing. Life goes on, and the last thing I would want is for any of you to remain sad. Celebrate the fabulous times we had together. I know this pain will never pass, but your words give me hope for a beautiful life. I love you endlessly and forever. Love, Carly. <laughs> <laughs>